I'm Hope Beverstein. I'm a retired nurse. I retired at 70. Nine, ten. I like to stay active. Exercise classes and plenty of walking with my friends. I really enjoy traveling. My next trip is to Iceland. I'd never been there before. I'm looking forward to going. I've heard wonderful things about its volcanoes and geysers and its very friendly people. Iceland is located in the North Atlantic Ocean, midway between Greenland and Norway. Iceland has a population of 270,000 people. People have lived here since the 8th century. For most of the year, Iceland is covered in snow. But I went at a time when the weather was quite nice. On my first day in Iceland, I visited Sugog, a small village, a day's journey from the capital city of Reykjavik. I stopped by their wonderful folk museum. It's almost a miniature village and includes several ancient farmhouses with sod roofs, like the ones they used to have over a hundred years ago. The museum is run by a man named Fodor Thomason. And I heard him sing and play a beautiful Icelandic song on his old Icelandic organ. Fodor's songs about Icelandic culture, people and history helped prepare me for the rest of my trip. On the wall next to his organ, one couldn't help but admire his family portraits. Folk Museum, I had the opportunity to ride an Icelandic horse. They're known to be small and very gentle animals. They, of course, were used always for the sheep roundup in the fall. And they can stand all kinds of rough territory. We rode out to a wide plain full of stone cairns. I learned from Fodor at the Folk Museum that it's an Icelandic custom to put a rock on the top of a cairn of stones because this brings luck to travelers. I thought it would be a good way to start my journey to explore the Icelandic countryside, including its legendary volcanoes and hot springs. Although I'm not superstitious, I didn't think it could hurt. My journey was to visit the real Iceland, places people don't normally see. I began my trip by driving through the Icelandic countryside. Iceland is such a beautiful country. There's stark, breathtaking landscapes as far as the eye can see. And beautiful waterfalls tumbling over green hills. It was amazing to see. I had a wonderful guy. His nickname was Connie and he was Icelandic. And he took me to all sorts of amazing places. Now today it was the Pingvilia. It's so windy, you know. 
Well, this is the end of the world. Uh, it was so windy, I thought I would be blown away. Incredible, isn't it? Oh, my God. Incredible. <laughs> Incredible. He took me to a spot where the continents are separated by water masses. In the Ice Age, they would have been joined, but have been separated by continental drifts. And this is the lake Thingvadlava, the biggest lake we've got in Iceland. Oh, over there. Volcanic islands yeah. out there, a couple of them. Yeah. And uh, then some volcanic mountains over there. Yeah. So this is the end of America here. Oh. Isn't it amazing? <laughs> And over there, you could say you have Europe. You see the big cracks over there? Europe's over, over there. Over there, you yes. could say that, yes. metaphorically speaking. So these are the tectonic forces that are splitting America on this side from Europe on the other side. So, so it's here that the continents are moving apart. Oh. You Americans are moving away from us all the time. And uh, the river floating down full of fish to the lake. Lots of good fish in all that water. Oh, yes. There's plenty of trout. There are five species, actually, of trout. Some of them up to 10, 15 pounds. Uh, this lava field you see down here was 8,000 years ago, yes. higher than we are standing now. Yes. As this splits apart, it sinks in the middle. Yes. It's amazing to think about, isn't it? <laughs> I was almost blown away. Connie took me to a big volcano called Hecla. Iceland has many volcanoes and some of them are still active. This is one of the most famous volcanoes in Iceland. So here we are at the roots of Mount Hecla. And you saw Hecla blow off the volcano. Yes, I uh, saw it in 1991. It was thought to be the opening to hell in the Middle Ages. It's soft to walk on. Yes, very, yeah, it's very good. Very soft. It's very windy, isn't yes. it? Yes. Oh, good heavens. Take a look at these ashes. Look at this, these are ashes. Ashes from Hecla in 1991. 10 kilometers away. Uh, yeah, it is, but still, you know, they are scattered all over this place. You can see it everywhere here, the ashes. It's absolutely yes. amazing. Find how light it is. Yes. But still, it's, it will sink in water. It's a basalt. That's why it's so black. How deep is it? In many places, several feet, up to 10, 15 feet. Oh. Oh. So it's... Quite amazing. But these ashes got scattered miles and miles away. Did you get uh, any ashes on your head? No, no. You were too far uh, yeah, away. Yeah, uh, the wind was the wrong direction. So if it blew off again, we'd be right in the way, wouldn't uh, we? Uh, yeah, head? more or less, more or less. And when this stuff comes down, is it hot? No, it cools oh, before it, it falls off. down. Yes, it cools very well. So it wouldn't burn us if no, it No, that's right. No. That's right, it wouldn't burn us. No. It was thought yes. to be the opening to hell oh, all yes. through the Middle Ages. Yes. The opening to hell. It's amazing. And it might, might blow off any other time. Might. Tomorrow. <laughs> Maybe this <laughs> afternoon. Know. Connie was such a good sport and we joked about Hitler erupting again while we were there. That would have been exciting, but I'm glad it didn't happen. Connie and I continued our journey along the coast road and we came to a big white lighthouse, the oldest one in Iceland. It was built in 1878, so it's almost as old as my mother and it's still in use today, although now it's fully automated and no one lives there anymore. It was a cool day when we started out. Then the wind picked up and it got a lot colder. It's a good thing I had my parka with me. Iceland's a rocky, rugged country. Very beautiful. And the sea never seems too far away. 
after quite a walk, I came to Hafnerberg Cliffs, and they're very steep cliffs looking over the sea, just covered with bird's nests. There's hundreds of gulls happily having families there where no one can reach them. It was truly a beautiful sight, but I was cold from the wind and eager to get to our next stop, the falls at Golfus, and later the hot springs to warm up. Gullfoss, that is one of the must sees of Iceland. At the bottom of a deep chasm, there's a river that drops over two waterfalls, about 32 meters in all. And it's very dramatic. In the middle of the last century, those Beautiful falls were to be sold to some foreign people for making electricity. And the farmer who lived nearby and his daughter were very upset about this wonderful river and waterfall that was going to be sold and ruined for hydroelectric power. And she threatened to throw herself into the falls if they did this and finally she got, they got the government to, to keep the land as a national treasure. This area is now a national park and the falls are protected from any future development plans. I'm glad I never had to throw myself into a waterfall. One thing about Iceland was the air, it was so fresh and the landscapes were all unspoiled and interesting to look at. Next, Connie took me to an area where spectacular geysers were shooting boiling water into the air. All the geysers in the world were named after one enormous geyser in Iceland. But I was watching one that spews water in the air every three minutes. This is boiling water that's trapped under cooler water and then it explodes and shoots up into the air about 20 meters. The forces of nature always amaze me. We only see one-tenth of what happens above the surface. The real action happens below the ground. After so much traveling, I decided I could use a rest. Connie had the perfect place. Hot springs! Iceland is world-renowned for its hot springs, which are located around the country. I guess this is one compensation for living in such a cold climate. Beautiful hot water where you can uh, sit for hours and meet people from all over the world enjoying it. We chatted about everything. It was very relaxing and warm. Some people were actually uh, bathing, shampooing their hair. And the water was wonderfully warm against the cold Icelandic air. After a relaxing break, it was time to move on. Connie had planned a great surprise for me. We were going on a boat ride to see the icebergs. Cruising amongst the icebergs in Iceland was amazing. At the edge of the glacier, there was a very deep lagoon 
with chunks of ice dropping off the glacier and floating around. And uh, Connie took me on a boat ride, which was explaining this to me. You know, this lagoon, the glacier has been retreating here since about 1945 and forming this big, this huge lagoon, and uh, which is about three miles long, about 10 to 12 square miles. So, so it's uh, a deep lagoon. It's uh, about 600 feet deep, 200 meters. That's, that's an enormous depth, probably the deepest lake in Iceland. How many years ago were those ridges formed on that mountain over there? Well, they were formed uh, in the Ice Age, when all the country was covered with ice, 1,800 feet thick of ice, mm. and reaching all the way down to the ocean, and, and then retreating and leaving these. So when were these pieces of ice formed? How many years ago? Well, they say that the ice coming down here is about 800 years old. 800 years ago, this was snow falling down somewhere on the top of the glacier and then it has to get to the bottom. And the glacier is on the average 1,500 feet thick. It's absolutely amazing, isn't it? It's, it's so beautiful seeing these glaciers floating here. They're all floating, you know. Look at that black, beautiful iceberg and, yeah, and, and that white one in a constant, yeah. yes. And why is that one so very black and the other so very white? It could be two reasons. It could have been close to where sand blows on it, but most uh, likely it's uh, because there is a mountain up there which the ice scratches and takes off a lot of uh, soil and stones and rocks. Yes, and, and brings it all the way down. That's right. And the yeah. white ones are just pure snow. Yeah, and the blue ones you see, where the Turkish blue, they are the ones that have been overturning. Is Sometimes that so? They overturn, yeah. And they make a lot of noise and waves and splash. Yeah, it's pretty dangerous to get close to them. I should think it's so. It's not safe. Yes. And nine tenths of them are underneath the water, you know. Yes. That's an extraordinary one here. That's such a strange shape. Yeah. <laughs> and would it be the wind makes it that shape? Yeah, the wind and the rain seems to cut them and they seem yes. to be harder in some places and softer in others. And sometimes I, I, I imagine shapes. I can see faces and uh, animals. If you have imagination in this. Yes, I saw case. a large cat this morning. You saw a cat this morning? <laughs> yeah. I like that. It was so thrilling to see the icebergs from the water that I asked Connie if I could go to the top of the glacier and see the source of all these wonderful bergs. And so, up I went. There's one very large glacier in Iceland. The biggest glacier in all Europe, it's even a kilometer deep in some parts. The snowmobile I rode in was a high-tech vehicle, very modern. A, a special kind that can travel over these, these chasms that you have to go across. Soon we saw storm clouds approaching. We had no choice. We turned around and made our way back down the glacier. I was a bit disappointed we hadn't made it to the top, but the ride itself was unforgettable. What an adventure I have had, and I could think of no better way to top off my visit to Iceland than with a soothing warm bath at the Blue Lagoon. The warm water of the lagoon is the affluent from a large power plant that supplies electricity to the island. 
People of all ages love to come and bathe and swim here. I thought Iceland would be cold, but here I was diving in this wonderful warm water. The water's special and people come for its medicinal properties, said to be very good for the skin. It was very relaxing. Going to Iceland was a surprising experience. It is such a beautiful country. What amazed me was the raw nature. Those geysers and waterfalls and beaches in, in Iceland, rugged, oh, and so beautiful like you've never seen before. That beautiful fresh air, so clear, it's like breathing pea soup when I come back home. But I had to return. My journey had come to an end. It was an amazing experience. I learned that people and nature can coexist.